Hi, it's Constant Angley. Um, little video here on hopping, plopping, and buzzing frogs that I use for pike fishing here in the UK. You could also use these lures for pike fishing anywhere in the world, and I know American bass anglers use these lures. This is pretty much where us uh, guys in the UK got this from. <clears throat> so let's start off with hopping. Now what I mean by hopping is you have your really realistic frogs here. So you get your soft, hollow body frog, same as before, weedless. Um, but they've got more realistic legs. And these legs extend and retract as you pull frog along in little short stubby pulls. Uh, they look super realistic and if you can imagine from before, be, well below, sorry, you can see these lures you know they look very realistic they look like a real frog more so than the more traditional skirted frogs got another one there different color in yellow they're very good when the pike have seen it all bright conditions when they're going to get a good look at it uh well they're just different to what most people will throw most people will just pick up a normal uh standard skirted frog and throw that and they will catch pike but sometimes pike us in it all. Uh, the retrieve obviously like I said is a short pull just enough to get those legs extending and retracting. Uh, this example I have here is the longer hunt frog. Uh, the body's two and a quarter inches at rest and extends to four and a half inches uh, as you pull it along. Uh, the body actually sits in the water a little bit like that very like a real frog sits in the water and um, this one's had a couple of fish and you can see it's still in one piece one of the legs did start to uh, come away with a bit of super glue and a bit of welding melting of the plastic and it, it's still fine it's strong as anything um, that is the downside of these frogs sometimes these can get bitten off by the pipe but they're pretty hardy uh, the next one i've got here is basically a rip off of that long run off of aliexpress or ebay somewhere probably came from china um it's important if you're buying the cheaper ones to make sure you do get the right size because there are a lot of smaller ones around which is great for chub and perch i guess um but for the pike you want something you know with that kind of size to it presence you can see the one on the right is a little bit wider bodied than the uh, longer hunt one um slightly different action but not a lot in it similar way obviously the uh the plastic is cheaper so i guess not so durable the legs feel pretty much the same actually and they do actually uh extend and retract when you wind them in um this will probably get shredded easier the hooks are nowhere near as they are sharp as anything the hooks but they're not sort of razor point sharp like the lunker hunts so next so let's do plopping so when I'm talking about uh, frogs that plop, I'm talking about something like this. They've got a booted tail to them. This actually has uh, wired all the way through in the tail. So it's gonna take some punishment. And um, this is the Booyah Toad Runner. They basically are trying to imitate a whopper plopper lure, which is so popular in the States for the bass fishing. With that lure, it's a lot to do with the sound that it makes. The plopping sound that it makes seems to really attract the fish. Booyah's come up with a uh, keeled frog here go through the water easy and allow that tail to work they've still got a bit of skirt in here which i guess will fill the hose beautiful hooks on them sharp as anything trocker point hooks i would say um the original frog plopping frog was what they called a tecla sprinker frog uh, they were very expensive and very hard to get hold of to start off with and people made their own which is something i'll show you in a minute I can't get hold of one of those, they cost way too much, but I managed to source one of these boo yards for a reasonable price. I think I got it for about £12 shipped here. So yeah, it's the noise uh, and the wake that it creates. Um, and of course it's weedless, whereas the standard hard body whopper proper lure, you couldn't throw in places that this would. So there's your plopping frogs from there. This is basically what people were doing when they couldn't get hold of the original uh, boot-tailed frog. They were making up a little system here which they put over the hooks of the frog so you had a large split ring a swivel and then if you can see a hook keeper there which you thread your boot tail on the end and this was not ideal it's just what i've grabbed out of the garage quickly 
uh, you want a thicker, stubbier boot tail like that one there. Uh, they tend to uh, paddle better and, and make more noise rather than this loose one here, which will flop around a bit. Um, and then all you got to do is be careful when you do this: is turn the rubber of the frog around, push the two hook points together. Just want to do this on camera. It's very tricky. And push split ring over the back now there are neater ways than this to achieve the same thing as you can see there that will travel along behind it probably just below the surface a little there so it's not perfect but you know it's sort of a homemade effort this um, you can find do more neater ways as I was saying where you can make a hole in the back, you can glue uh, hook keepers in, swivels in, you can put wire through a um, single piece of wire and put the swivel onto that. You can do all of that and that's that's okay, I mean that's not so bad for the bass but we're talking pike here. If you did that with pike I think they would rip it out of the back of the lure. So if you are going to make yourself a homemade sprinkler frog because that's what they were all based on originally. Um, I prefer this split ring version. It's not as neat, but it does work. Um, this frog is not ideal for it. You really want, as you can see, the toad runner is uh, has quite a keel shape to it, uh, a narrow keel shape rather than um, a bulbous body shape. There. Um, so yeah, you want more of that sort of frog. Things like your Sprove walking frogs and your Booyah walking frogs, pad crashers are good for converting. Some frogs you can even get with two holes that come out the back so you could rig something up differently there. But obviously we're thinking of the fish. This might It might be able to bite that off, pull that plastic off, but it can spit that out. But we don't want it getting big lumps of metal and swivels and stuff like that other than a hook point in it. So yeah, just a little thing for you to think about there. Something I've done before. Um, I'll have to make another one up now, but this was before I got out of this one. So if you don't want to import something, use the frogs you already have. Give this a whirl and experiment with it. And let me know how you get on. You know, if you find a better solution than that, sure there is, then um, make a little video or drop me a picture. Um, maybe I'll do a little video of it and I'll give you a big shout out. Now, <clears throat> you used to, talking now about flashing spinning frogs, I call them, you used to be able to buy a Savage Gear frog that had little metal spinner blades on it. You could get a single hook version and a double hook version. They were very good. I used to catch a lot of pike on them. I guess the flash and the wake and the look of the thing uh, drove the pike crazy. Now, I was looking for another one because mine eventually split and was unrepairable and um, lost it somewhere and lent it to a mate I was with. And I couldn't find them anymore, which is a bit of a disappointment. So I've come up with my own here. And what I've done, basically, is, you can see there, I can get it to focus nicely. I've got a couple of little spin, spinning spoons there, whatever you want to call them, blades, attached a couple of little split rings, and then hook them over the hooks, and down around the bend of the hook. And as that's going along, they flap around. Sometimes they do clonk each other, but they do spin around and they give a little bit more vibration, a little bit of flash, something different. And I tend to retrieve these by doing this. Whereas the Toad Runner by Booyah, it's just a straight retrieve. You can stop it if you want, but it's all about the straight retrieve. Haven't used it yet, but uh, there's a little idea for you. Something a bit different again, and this is why I'm doing it. It's uh, you know, the pike could have seen everything. Um, they can't bite this off because it's on the hooks. They'll collapse the body and boom. Hopefully the hooks will be set and they'll be between the hook point and the fish's mouth. So a little idea of my own, so I'm going to try in the future. If you can find frogs with this setup anyway, then, then buy them and uh, drop me a comment and let me know where I can get them from. So we've done plopping and flashing and spinning. So now we come to quite a large category now. We come to buzz frogs. 
Now I've got three examples in front of me here. I think I've got another one which I'll take out of the back for you a second. There we go. Another one, slightly bigger bodied one. With buzz frogs, what, what are they? What are we using them for? Well, obviously we're using them for pike, bass, whatever, whatever you choose to. They're soft bodied plastic lures. You can rig with an EWG or a swim bait hook with a keeper on it. Maybe a weighted hook, depends on the lure and your circumstances. And they're totally weedless. They work like any weedless lure. Bite down on the bait, expose, big single hook. Now there are a couple of varieties of them and we're going to pull these with a straight retrieve along the surface so keep your old tip up and just wind them as fast as you need to keep them up on the surface. Obviously if you've got a weighted hook you'll have to wind a little bit faster but you'll be able to cast a little bit further. So there's your choices. Now I've got a couple of examples here. You have some that come with uh, hooked uh, feet. Um, this one here is a big bite bait. Uh, Tor Toad in Watermelon and Red Ghost. You can see it's got a nice silvery white belly uh, with watermelon flat in red top. Um, it's got a groove there for your hook to sit in. It's a nice lure. It's got a little bit of weight to it. I don't know how much they do weigh, but you can chuck these out on your uh, pike gear if you're struggling. Get a weighted swim bait hook you'll do the same you just have to wind it a little bit faster now why do we use these well we're looking you know I'll talk about size they're about four inches in size those usually I, I would like some bigger ones for pike but i haven't found any yet so if you do let me know um we're looking for more active fish here we're looking for some sort of um reaction bite maybe we'll pull it across their nose and they'll go, wow, what's that? Chase after it and snap it. Uh, so quite aggressive fish are, are going to do this. Maybe uh, they're they're laid up a bit, the pike, and uh, they need something to get them to move and have a go at something and chase. So if you put it across their nose, it might just pee them off enough for them to have a go at it. Uh, usually when you use these, you you get a, they're they're great because you get a pike rolling along behind them and then smash. Um, and it's your usual strike, wait until you feel the weight of the hook, don't strike at the splash before you set the hook and then set it hard. But the advantage of these are totally weedless and they create a ruckus on the surface. Um, some slightly different to others, obviously the paddle tails are going to make a more of a plopping noise. This may be more of a buzzing noise. Um, this one here is a lake fork guy trophy lures uh, it's a fork frog watermelon SD red uh, just slightly bigger than those other two so that's <clears throat> why so I bought it but it stinks of garlic so haven't used it yet you can see the recesses in here all good for hooking um, not a recess in the top actually but I guess that's because of the thickness of the bait you could put one in there yourself as I uh, do with my Senkos if you see my Senko hacks video uh yeah there's a bit more weight to that one that one casts a bit further but yeah garlic i know perch like it what do you think with pike will they i think they'll probably just have a go at it because it's there itself and you pull it along the surface very quickly so i don't think they're going to taste it <laughs> and then go Bleh, not having that they're just going to bite it by which time you're going to hook them obviously well here's hoping uh third one i got here is the z-man um hard leg frogs uh, it's watermelon and citrus so a little bit of a different color they're going to see that from below aren't they um you only get three in a pack with these a four inch um these you get a lot more you get a I don't know it looks like a good half a dozen you get five with the big bite baits and obviously they're a lot cheaper the thing with the z-man lures is they last longer so if you're looking to fish for toothy critters like pike they're not going to bite through this as easy as they will maybe that but these baits are cheap enough that uh, you don't have to worry too much about losing the old bait they're like a normal soft plastic um, you can afford to buy some more definitely cheaper than these sort of things like the toad runner which uh, you know, that sent me back about 12 pounds I can't think I've already said um, 
this is an AliExpress that I've converted there. Lunker Hunt, you're looking at about 12 to 15 pounds. You might even have to import it. They're difficult to find. I do find them on eBay. Um, so yeah, they are. It is possible to find them. So yeah, Z-Man can be good like that. This is on a, a weighted, I can't think what they call it, chin lock hook. hook. So you need that with Z-Man because they, because of the what they're made of, the material they're made of, they tend to slip down the hook and mass the hook point. Um, there are some tricks I'll show in a little fraud modification video I'm intending to do you, to stop that. But yeah, pluses and minuses. Good lure. That'll catch pike. And then I have something interesting. Now you got to, I'm hoping somebody knows what these are called because I bought them about three years ago, chucked them in the garage and totally forgot about them like an idiot. So I haven't used them. But they're they're a buzz shad. So whereas with the traditional walking frog, surface frogs, we had our live target sunfish. This is a buzz frog equivalent to that. And as you can see, you can rig them on a nice big, this is about a 450 EWG hook. And this one has paddle tails, but it's a totally different profile, obviously. And it weighs a tiny bit more, which is all good in the casting stakes. And if you see here, I've got them in a different color. So obviously he was really interested in them. God knows why I forgot, but if you see in the state of my garage, you'd understand. Um, and it's rigged differently here. I'm not so sure about this myself, but time will tell. It's a huge big belly slot, and you see you rig it more traditionally with your EWG hooks, so you're just Texas rigging them, aren't you? Um, how easy that will be when they chop down on it, expose the point, I don't know. I'd probably put a bit of Vaseline here with the uh, bend gape of the hook is, so that, that depresses a lot easier, because it's not that easy in my hand, but you'll see. As long as you can expose enough of the hook point, that will be fine. So yeah, something of interest there, and please let me know if you do know what they're called. I bought them from AGM Discount in the UK here. Maybe I should uh, should ask him. Hopefully he's a subscriber and he'll remember. <clears throat> but yes, I haven't caught on these yet, but they're going to work. They just work. Pike will have them. Pike are quite aggressive creatures and they'll have them all. Uh, so, colours. Well, as with all of these, um, usual colours, the usual times, dark colours in low light conditions, bright colours to annoy, more natural colours if you think they're going to get a good look at it. As in the lunk hunt there. And um, shad colours if they're chasing bait fish. That's where that will work well. Uh, yeah, so you, your colours are the same as your other frogs, but try more garish colours sometimes to annoy pike, which whatever type of um, frog buzz bait you're using. Uh, just try to be different sometimes, sometimes that can work. Um, one little tip, I haven't got one here, but uh, I did notice somebody the other day, <coughs> you could, whereas you have your, your buzz frog here, you could use one of your swimming crawls and do the same with that along the surface. We want, I suggest a, a decent sized swimming crawl, a good four or five inch one. But the claws on that would flap and buzz along and create a commotion. So, you know, if you haven't got any of these, try one of those. You never know. You might need to use a weighted hook with it, but it's worth a go. Nearly forgot about this little tip. Um, as you've seen, I had some flash with the little spinner spoons blades there. You could do the same on your EWG hooks with your buzz baits. So you just slip it on there, to expose it, pop out the other end. There you go, you got a little flashing spinning blade there underneath. A little bit of flash may make the difference. I haven't done this yet, but it's gonna work. Just know it's gonna work. <laughs> 